Okay, uh, in this video, we want to consider some more basic counting problems, and we have three of them to consider. The first one reads, if two dice are rolled two successive times, how many outcomes are possible? And the second question is, what is the probability that each die shows the same value on the second roll as the numbers that were displayed on the first row of the dies. And then finally, the last question is, what is the probability that the sum of the displayed numbers is the same on both rows of the dice? So we take a pair of dice and we throw them. We might get the numbers um, 3 and 3 that add up to 6. If we throw it the second time, we might get different numbers, but the numbers might be 2 and 4, and their sums, again, add up to the same number, add up to the number 6. And for this question, we're asking, what is the probability of that happening? Well, the numbers might be different, but their sums are the same. Well, let's go back to the first question. If two dice are rolled two successive times, how many outcomes are possible? Now, we know that if one dice is rolled, or one die is rolled, there are six possible outcomes. The numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If one die is rolled two times, so here's the first event, a die is thrown, there are six possible outcomes. We roll it the second time, with one die, there are six possible outcomes. So now, if we roll it once and then successively roll it the second time, and we ask ourselves, what is the total number of outcomes for this? By the counting principle, it is the number of ways that this event can occur times the number of ways that that event can occur. That's just six times six, or 36 possible outcomes. And here they are, right here. Let's see if we can display it better. These are the 36 possible outcomes on two rolls of the die. The first number might be 3. And then the second number might be 4 to give us 3, 4. Or the first number might be 1, and the second number might be 6 to give us 1, 6, and so forth. So 36 possible outcomes if um, a die is rolled two successive times. Or we could get 36 possible outcomes if we took a pair of dice and rolled them simultaneously. And then we recorded the number off of one die, it might be a four, and then record the number off a second die, it might be five, to give us the number four, five. So there are 36 possible outcomes when one die is thrown two successive times, or if a pair of dice are thrown once. Again, 36 possible outcomes. So if two dice are rolled two times, what are the total number of outcomes? Well, for a pair of dice, when it's rolled the first time, there are 36 possible outcomes. For a pair of dice, when they're rolled again on the second event, again, there are 36 possible outcomes. So when we do it the one time and then successively do it the second time, the total number of outcomes, again, is the multiplication of the number of ways that this event can occur times the number of ways that that event can occur and that is 1,296. Now, 
what is the probability that each die shows the same value on the second row as on the first row. So if we rolled a pair of dice and we had the numbers 2 and 4, now we roll it again and we get the numbers 2 and 4, what is the probability of that happening? Well here then, on the first row of the dice of course, there are 36 different outcomes possible. On the second row of the dice, if all the numbers come up to be the same as this one, as what happened on the previous row, then there's only one choice for the numbers. Because they had to be the same as what was rolled previously. So in this case then, the total outcome is 36. So there are 36 ways that you can have the same numbers appearing on the first row and the second row of the dice. But of course, the total number of ways or the total number of possible outcomes is 1,296. So the probability of having the same identical numbers on the second row as what there were on the first row is 36 divided by 1,296, or of course that's just 1 out of 36. Now, for our next question, what we are considering is the probability that the sum of the displayed numbers the sum of the displayed numbers is the same on both rolls. The numbers might be different, but when you add them up, you get the same sum. What is the probability of that happening? Now here, let's just see, if we add the numbers up from different rolls of the dice, what different numbers can we generate? So here, we know that these are the numbers that would be displayed on a roll of dice, and the second time, those are the numbers. So if we add these up, what numbers do we get? We get the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so forth. These are the possible sums that we would get by adding these numbers here together. Now, what we need to consider though is how many different ways can this happen. For example, 2, to get that sum, there's only one way that that can happen. That's to have the numbers 1 and 1. For 3, there's two ways that that can happen. So, what we have to consider here now is that when we throw the pair of dice the first time, there's two ways that we can generate the number 3. When we throw it the second time, there's two ways that we can generate the number 3. So the total number of ways that we can get the number 3 by rolling the pair of dice twice is going to be 2 times 2, or that's 4. That's four different ways to get the number 3 by rolling the pair of dice two times. Here for 2, there's only 1. For 4, there's three different ways that the number 4 can be generated when we take a pair of dice and throw them one time. When we throw them two times then, there's going to be 3 times 3, or 9 different ways for the number 4 to be generated by taking the sums. When we take a pair of dice and we throw them, we see that there's four different ways of obtaining the sum 5. To get that to occur twice with two throws of the dice, the number of ways that that can occur is 4 times 4, or that's 16 different ways. Likewise, 6, when we take a pair of dice and throw them, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ways to obtain that sum. And if we do it twice on two rolls of the dice, 
then there would be 25 ways. 5 times 5, that's the counting principle. For 7, there are 6 different ways that, that we can get the numbers to sum to 7 on the first throw of the dice. Same thing on the second throw of the dice. So to get this, to, to get the numbers to add to 7 twice on 2 rolls of the dice, by the counting principle, is 6 from the first row times 6 from the second row. So that's 36. For 8, there's 5 different ways that the numbers can add up to 8 on the first row of the dice. So to get the sums to come up to 8 twice on each row of the dice, then that would be, again, 5 times 5, or 25. For 9, there's 4 different ways that the numbers can add up to 9 from the first row of the dice. So to get it to happen twice would be 4 times 4, or 16. And likewise for 10, there's 3 different ways that the numbers can sum up to 10 from the first row of the dice. To happen twice would be 3 times 3, or 9 different ways. And for 11, there's two different ways that the numbers can add up to 11. So to have it happen twice would be 2 times 2, or that would be 4. And for 12, there's only one way it can happen either time. 1 times 1 is just 1. So when we throw the dice and we consider the sum on the first throw and the sum on the second throw, we see that there is four ways of getting 11, one way of getting 12, 25 ways of getting a 6 on numbers to add up to 6, 36 ways to have the numbers add up to 7, 25 ways to have the numbers add up to 8 on the first row and on the second row, and the same thing, there are 16 ways to have the numbers add up to 9 on the first and second row of the dice. Same thing for 10. There are 16 ways to have the numbers add up to the same number 5 on two rows of the pair of dice. There are 9 ways to have the numbers add up to 4 on two rows of the pair of dice. There are four ways to have the numbers add up to three, the same number, when we have two rows of the pair of dice, and only one way they can add up to number two. So if we add these numbers together, that comes out to 146. So that means then, there is a total of 146 ways to get the same number displayed, or the sum of the same numbers, to be displayed from the first and second rolls of the dice. We get that number, of course, just by adding all these numbers together. So there's 146 ways that the sum on the first roll of the dice can be equal to the sum of the second roll of the dice. Well, when we throw the pair of dice two times, the total number of possible outcomes is 1,296. So the probability of having the sum of the numbers being the same on the first row of the dice and the second row of the dice is something like 0 0.11. OK, um, that's all I want to say for this video. Um, come back. Join us for some more videos, and we'll start getting into generating functions and how we can solve some of the more complicated uh, combination or permutation problems.